Leia here from LeiaForSci.com, and in this video, I'll show you how to find RNS configurations when given a Newman projection. Let's start with a simple molecule that has just one chiral center. That chiral center is the forward carbon since it has an OH, an ethyl group, a bromine, and a rear carbon which has three hydrogens attached to it or simply a CH3. You probably learned to redraw this as a sawhorse or to build a model kit. While both methods work, I find that they're a waste of time and potentially confusing. So definitely practice with a model kit, but on an exam you cannot afford to do that. Instead, if you can think about what you're looking at with the Newman projection, you can use it directly to find RNS. The first thing we want to do is prioritize the groups. Remember that we have a rear carbon back there that is attached to the three hydrogen atoms. In the absence of hydrogen, a methyl group attached to your chiral carbon will always be lowest priority number four. And remember that looking at your Newman projection head on, every single forward group is coming at you. So what you're really looking at, and don't redraw this, just understand it, is a carbon with an OH coming forward, a bromine coming forward, and an ethyl group coming forward. The only thing going back is your methyl group. So when you see this, and you know priority number four in this case is in the back, just draw dashes to show that it's going back and put a four on it. Next, we'll prioritize the remaining groups, bromine one, OH two, ethyl three, and hey, we have number four in the back. So all you have to do is cross out number four, trace a path from one to two to three, and we have R. This was a simple one to show you what we're looking at, but now let's see what happens if number four is not in the back. For this Newman projection, we'll have two hydrogens and a CH3 on the rear carbon. On the forward carbon, we'll have a CH3, a chlorine, and an NH2. First thing we want to do is prioritize. Remember, we have that carbon in the back attached to CH2, CH3. That makes it an ethyl group. So we're ranking chlorine, amine, methyl, and ethyl. Chlorine is number one. Nitrogen is number two. The ethyl group going back is number three. So I just draw dashes with the number three and the methyl is number four. In looking at this molecule, number four is coming forward, but so are one and two. So let's treat this with a swap method to make sure there is no confusion. We want a total of two swaps where number four goes to the back and the second swap makes sure I retain my chirality. First swap, I'll swap four and three, putting four in the back and three in the front. Second swap, at random, let's do one and two. Two on the right, one on the left, two swaps, that's an even number, that means the chirality is exactly the same. If you didn't follow, go back to the swap method video because that is critical, critical to doing well on stereochemistry and saving time. Now that number four is in the back, we cross it out, trace an arc from one to two to three, and we have S. Now I realize this is a tricky molecule, so what I'll do is redraw this in three dimensions, and I want you to follow along either trying to draw it on your own or with a model kit. Not as a method of doing this, but just to understand that what we did is correct so that you can trust yourself to rely on this method for similar and even more difficult problems. I'm going to take the approach where looking at the Newman projection head-on, will be the same as looking at it from the left. That means my blue carbon will be on the left and my green carbon will be on the right. If you're not comfortable converting Newman to Sohars, make sure you watch my Newman to Sohars video linked in the description. For the forward carbon, we have a CH3 in the up position. Because we're looking at it from the left, anything that aligns with my right eye when I tilt my face will be out of the page. And that means the chlorine will be on a wedge coming out of the page and the amine will be on dashes going into the page. The invisible line between the blue and green carbon is what I'm showing here, and the green carbon is achiral, so it doesn't really matter how we do it. We have a methyl group going straight down, and two hydrogen atoms, one coming out of the page, one going into the page, but in the up position. The only chiral carbon is the blue carbon on the left, because it has four unique substituents, where chlorine is number one, amine is number two, the entire green group, the ethyl, is considered number three, and methyl is number four. 
but once again we're faced with a situation where number four is in the plane of the page. So we can do the swap method, and we will in a moment, but I also want to show you a rotation again to make sure that you see what I did here. I moved the molecule up, and what I want to do now is rotate number four in the back. And as I'm going through this, I want you to appreciate why you never ever want to do this again. It's annoying, it's difficult, and it wastes a lot of time. We're going to rotate in that direction so that the methyl, which is number four, goes on dashes. That gives me a chiral carbon with the Cl now up in the plane of the page. The methyl on dashes, which means number four, will be in the back where we need it. The amine comes forward out of the page. And let's not forget our ethyl group, which is still in the page. I'll simplify this as CH2, CH3, since it's a chiral anyway. Let's reprioritize. We have one for chlorine, two for nitrogen, three for ethyl, four for methyl. Number four is in the back where we want it. Cancel out number four, trace the path from one to two to three, and look at that. All that hassle, just to prove that once again, it is S. Here's another interesting one you may see, where the forward carbon is achiral. In this case, it has three hydrogen atoms, and the rear carbon is chiral. We'll give an OH, a CL, and a BR. First thing we want to do is prioritize. Bromine is number one, chlorine two, OH3. The purple carbon in the front, having three hydrogens attached, is just a CH3, which makes it priority number four. Just like in the earlier example, where if the group was back, I put dashes. Here, if the group is forward, I'll just put a wedge and show that it's number four coming forward. If this gets confusing, you can just rewrite it like this. Three, two, one, and number four coming forward. And then remember what happens when number four is forward. You treat it the same way, cancel out group number four, trace the path from one to two to three, and what looks like R has to be reversed because you're looking at it backwards, making this molecule S. Now this was all looking at Newman projections with just one chiral carbon, but the same exact tricks apply when you have two chiral carbons. The only difference is that I recommend either redrawing the Newman projection or redrawing the numbers so that you're not trying to prioritize two chiral carbons on the same drawing because it'll get really, really messy. And you can find questions like that along with other tricky questions on my stereochemistry quiz. Find the quiz along with this entire video series and stereochemistry cheat sheet by visiting my website, layerforsci.com chirality.